I'm Lee Greer and this is Jonathan Hoover. Well, we wanted to tell about Isaac and the series Teaching Prayer and how he came to teach that series. Jonathan and I began praying six or seven years ago in the sanctuary. There was a friend of ours. He eventually fell away and he'll be back. Don't be discouraged. You may be two or three, but no. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in, in His name. And they agree as touching anything, He is in their midst. I'm just putting the two verses together. So if you get a partner to pray, count it a blessing. The reason we, we kept coming once a week is because, not because of some sense of, of duty or, or a, whatever. It's, it's, it's that things happen. The Lord has been loyal in, in teaching us. Uh, it, we show up and He does amazing things. So long as they are committed, God will always answer your prayers and do what you ask Him to do. Yeah. So. It's always something new. And we, as Isaac was teaching in the series, God speaks. He does speak. We know that. God spoke to us while we were here praying and said, I want you to open the prayer group up to many and diverse people. With prayer, you open doors of heaven and God pours out His blessings and miracles. You, you call people to pray. If you're pastoring maybe a church of 300 people, you may end up with 30 or 50. The rest won't come. So prayer meetings are always uh, uh, hard to run. And, and so, don't be discouraged. You may be two or three, but no. We were kind of stuck about how are we supposed to lead a prayer group with many and diverse people. We had had people come before, and we had experience with that, and it was not the same as just the two of us praying. It, I think it was only the two of us for about three years or so, and, and then some ladies asked to join us, and then others said, well, we want to come too, and... We first we have a little meeting and a discussion, then we would go to the sanctuary and pray. And other people came for prayer. They brought people for prayer. I never felt like I was a good leader. I didn't want to organize it like a church program because it was led by the Lord and by the Holy Spirit. Especially God speaking specifically about what we were going to do. That was the only way it worked before. So when people came, it it wouldn't work by turning it into a church program. And you allow the Spirit of God to begin to speak to you from inside out. And then you'll be able to know and to identify the voice. It takes time. It took me a number of time to train myself to know the voice of God, the voice of the Spirit. So then God gave us a bigger uh, commission of, of opening it up to many and diverse people. He, the vision He gave was for a room with, with people who come expecting something that we don't necessarily know and I didn't I had no idea how to run anything like that and uh, I know the problems we've had before is that people have different concept of what of what prayer is well we so we asked the Lord we said we need help with leadership show us how to run a prayer meeting with many and diverse people and as it came to America and I'm mentioned about Jonathan and I and he volunteered to he said I'll teach prayer if you want us to and came and that was God's answer to prayer it wasn't just he was going to talk to us but God said get the video camera and make you know, record this and Isaac was encouraged by it and uh, it became what it is so that's the background about how Isaac began to teach this um, want to add anything to that Jonathan? sure well, Lee doesn't remember, but I remember that I was speaking at a men's spiritual retreat called Trace Dias, and the Lord arranged it to where uh, Lee and this other uh, man came and prayed for me uh, before I spoke, and again afterwards. And during that time, we talked about that we felt like God was calling us to begin meeting together, and... So then, after that, then Lee and uh, the other fellow spoke and then contacted me and we arranged to come to this. So I, uh, to me, this wasn't just 
uh, even though we thought at the time, you know, this sounds like a good idea, we should get together. It really was God bringing it to pass um, because he had a purpose for it. And he has a purpose for us still today, even though we've been together praying for seven to eight years. Um, He's not through with us yet. He doesn't want us to keep doing the same thing over and over again. We were praying about this even before this uh, recording session that that the Lord always liked to do something that we didn't count on every time we would get together so that it wouldn't be the same. And so now he's moving us into a new place where we will be able to truly lead uh, many diverse people. And I, that reminds me of uh, what the prophet Isaiah said, that um, quoting God, saying, my house will be a house of prayer for all nations. So when you think of diverse people, we think of many nations. And here we already have Pastor Isaac coming from Kenya, Africa, and participating on the beginning of this. And we look forward to what the Lord's going to do with these many diverse people. And uh, Rosie will be calling from Trinidad, we're yes. sure. Matter of fact, my phone has been buzzing, and I'm almost certain that's her. Oh. But <laughs> we, I'm glad to hear your your side of this because you're right I don't remember those things and just like the gospels were written by different people different accounts of the same events it's important that we all talk about the same Jesus that we know in different ways that's what Isaac did for us yes. Isaac being an encouragement to us because what he said was original to him as his life experiences but he comes from another part of the world and, and talks about the same things that have happened to us meaning that this is not something denominational, not cultural. It's not something we we're we're trying to make happen. It's it's the same the same same testimony here as it is in Isaac's life in Africa. Maybe we can talk to Rosie. Maybe we can talk to. Him.